Thanks, Mike. Hopefully this is okay to, to stand up. So good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for attending. So yeah, I'm going to give an overview of the, the, map server, the map server project, what it is for any new users. So there's probably lots of existing users. And then talk about the 8 release, which I covered in a similar talk last year. So there's a lot of um, new material since then. Uh, and then go on to the map server ecosystem. So the projects that kind of revolve around map server and then how to get involved in, in the community. So just a quick uh, overview of what is map server. So it's been around for a while. It's been around since 1997, uh, created by Steve Lime, who's still one of the major contributors today. It's got an MIT style license and it's one of the founding OSGO projects. So it basically serves out data, hence the name map server. It's, it's read only. So it focuses on, on rendering and serving data. And it kind of hits all the OGC standards, um, so WMS, WFS, and it's starting to cover the new OGC API standards. So that's one of the major features of version 8 is the OGC features API, which is the successor to WFS. It's known for being fast. It's cross-platform, so it runs on uh, Linux, Windows, and Mac. And it's mostly written in C, but there's been a move to C++ kind of in the last year or so. Um, so here's a kind of an old slide which has um, a kind of another summary of map server. So it's an engine. So if you think of it more of a, a library than a framework in development terms, it's kind of easy to plug into existing systems. It uses CGI uh, or fast CGI, which has been around for, for many years. Um, yeah, it's fast, it's powerful. And I guess the key thing is that um, the PSC members and the developers are all from different organizations. So there's no single company behind it, it's kind of spread out, which I guess is, is good for kind of the long-term future of the project. Uh, here's a quick slide, so Map Server, when it first was created was a collection of libraries, so I think it was Shapelib was the first one, and it's kind of continued in that vein with, with different dependencies being switched out. So here are the kind of the required ones, but there's lots of extra dependencies depending on what you want to do with Map Server. Uh, so a couple of the key ones are GDAL and Proj, so there's been um, funding under the NumFocus project for, for GDAL, which obviously has a big knock-on benefit to, to all the projects that use GDAL, such as Map Server and QGIS. So that's a big benefit when the, um, the dependent libraries are being maintained and updated. So since last year, so it's at the Buenos Aires State of Map Server, um, there's been eight new contributors. So that, that's great news, and another t almost 250 commits. There's actually 300 lines less code than there was a year ago in, in the project. Uh, that's mainly from the removal of the PHP map script bindings. So there was a lot of code and tests that weren't really maintained. Um, so I'll come on to that. But basically, the PHP is now being automatically generated like all the other map script bindings. So I'll come back to that. In terms of the latest releases, uh, so I kind of said Map Server 8 was imminent last year, but now it really is imminent. There's a, a release candidate came out last Friday. So it's already gone through two rounds of beta testing, uh, and that's the first release candidate. So it should be imminent, imminent this time. Um, you can always build it from, from source on GitHub. So a lot of people in this room might be, might be using the features from version 8 for a while. Um, but the official release should hopefully be out very shortly. Uh, there's a family of map server pr uh, projects. So it's not only map server, but it has its map cache project. So this is for caching data. So tiles, you can cache WMS into tiles. You can cache vector, vector tiles. Uh, so there was a new release of that in 2022, so in March of this year, which has Redis support. And then, as I mentioned, map server is for serving data. So there's no writing data, but there's an associated project, TinyOWS, written by Olivier Cortin. So that's um, if you need to write, write data to Postgres, PostGIS, um, you can use that. And it's kind of in the, the family of, of Map Server. So yeah, there's a few status reports. Um, the one from last year covers a lot of the new features that are coming in version 8. So I'm not going to recover those because there's been new, new, new features. So I'll go over those in, in this talk. Um, but yes, if you're interested in things like the OGC Features API and how to use it in Map Server, then um, yeah, there's last year's, year's talk at, uh, for Buenos Aires. OK, so um, I go on to the Map Server 8 release. Um, so as I say, the release candidate 1 is out now. So if, if you can download and test and, and give any feedback, that would be great um, to make sure the first release is, um, doesn't have any major issues. 
Um, and any new developments are, are proposed by RFCs, requests for comments. So if there's a major change or a major feature, it goes through a, a process of being voted on um, by, the, by the PSC members. So that's how new big features get integrated into Map Server. So I've already gone over the, the three kind of main things that go into version 8 last year, but just briefly, there's the OGC API support. So that's the features API. So basically, you're replacing WFS, um, which is XML-based, with uh, a JSON API. Uh, the second one, and probably a key one if you're looking to upgrade, is the introduction of a, a config file. So this allows you to set global settings across all your maps over map files, so you don't have to have the same settings kind of repeated. And it also means you don't have to have lots of environment variables, which can get mixed up on different web servers. Um, Basically, there was a few issues with the cross-platform approach, where if you set environment variables, they wouldn't work on Windows, or they work on Linux and not on other things. So with the config file, this means you can set everything in one place. And it also means you can secure things, so you can ensure that map files get loaded from a folder you specify. As previously, you could load a map file from any location on, that was accessible from the web server, which, which had a few security risks. So that's um, a key change is the, the requirement to have a config file. And then there's also the port to Proj6, which I think works for 7, 8, and 9. So basically, the new Proj API is in, in Map Server 8. So you can start using that for, for kind of increased accuracy of your, your coordinate transformations. Uh, so if you're looking to upgrade, there's a migration guide online that covers all of the, the changes. So as I mentioned, the PHP map script native bindings are gone and replaced with the PHP NG, SWIG generated bindings. So MapScript is um, a language for manipulating Map Server. You can, you can use Python, you can use C Sharp, you can use now PHP, um, I think there's TCL or Tickle. There's, there's all sorts of languages that you can use. And now they're all generated using um, SWIG, so they all have the same API and the same interface. Uh, another change, if anyone uses the shape to image for testing, it's been renamed map to image. So we're not dealing with shapefiles that much anymore. Um, we're generating maps rather than rendering shapefiles. So that's, that's another change on one of the utility applications. And then here's an example of the, the config file. So I guess the, the only requirement is the MS map pattern. So it's a, it's a regex, so you can limit which folders you load your, your map files from. So again, it's to prevent loading map files which might have references to DLLs and things that you don't want your, your server to load. There's also been some, some syntax changes. So map server is driven by map files, which has its own custom language. So it kind of looks a bit like XML with all, without all the, the tags. Uh, and there's been a bit of cleanup. So if you're migrating from 7 to 8, uh, there's been some keywords removed. But all the keywords that have been removed have been either redundant for about 15 years, or there's a better way of doing them. So it's really to try and limit the, the map file language so it's easier to pass and manipulate. Uh, so if you're looking to upgrade, um, I have a website that you can check your, your syntax from version 7.6 to 8, and it'll highlight any, any changes you have to make, but they, they should be fairly minimal. Okay, so one of the new, new features is um, native flat geobuff support. So um, this, was, this was written by Bjorn Hartel who I think is at the conference, possibly not here. But um, yeah, you might have heard of uh, flat geo buffers. So they've already been introduced into, into GDAL, but now they're natively in Map Server. So they're basically very fast. Um, and rather than vector tiles, as I understand it, they, they don't lose coordinates. So vector tiles can be simplified, whereas with flat geo buff, you, you keep your source data. Um, and they're, they're faster to create than, than vector tiles. So um, it's based on a, a, the, Google's flat buffers format. So this is basically for, for Geo. Uh, and Jeff McKenna did some testing. So basically, there's a, there's a new leader. Shapefile isn't the, the quickest anymore. Uh, the native flat Geo buff is, is slightly faster. Uh, and just to explain, yeah, when, if, when it's native, it means that Map Server has its own driver within the Map Server project, whereas you can also access anything, um, any other format that GDAL or OGR can read, uh, Map Server can read as well. Uh, there's a slight overhead. 
So you see the flat geobuffs, you can either use the native map server driver or you can use the, the GDAL driver. So there's a slight overhead going through GDAL, but obviously GDAL gives you access to 60, 70 more formats that you can then render directly with, with map server. Um, this one is also a new feature, a new utility application, and I'm presuming it's not um, an elaborate hoax from, from Paul Ramsey. But uh, cloud optimized shapefiles, um, basically there's a new application to sort your shapefiles so that it can be read faster over HTTP. So um, yeah, I'm not sure if any applications take advantage of this yet, but it's, yeah, shapefiles are, are, are still around and now they're faster than ever. Um, and yeah, onto map script changes. So as I say, um, there's lots of map script languages, Python, PHP, and now they're all generated using a program called Swig. So they're all consistent, uh, which means that we can have consistent map script API docs. And then um, in the new docs for version eight, all of the docs are generated from the, the Python Swig bindings, so they're always up to date. Um, whereas before, there was lots of functions and things that hadn't been kept updated, but now as they're auto-generated from the code base, it should be easier to maintain and make sure they're up to date. And yet again, the, the PHP 7 plus um, is supported now from Map Server 8, and the native ones are, are gone. So yeah, in terms of the, the development, the two new main features are the flat geobuffs um, and, and the cloud optimized shapefiles, but there's lots of other stuff from last year um, that's going into version 8. OK, so then the ecosystem. So Map Server's been around for, for a long time. So there's a lot of projects that, that kind of link into Map Server or build on Map Server. Um, a great way to start with Map Server is uh, OSGO Live. So Astrid gave a talk yesterday. Um, so yeah, Map Server is ready to, to test and play with directly if you install OSGO Live. It's on version 7.6 um, at the moment, so hopefully next year we'll go on to, to version 8. Also, Map Cache is available on OSGO Live. And there's a couple of client applications that use Map Server as a back end. So GeoXt and GeoMoose are both browser applications that use the Map Server demo on OSGO Live. So it's a great way to, to get familiar with the software. Um, if you're on um, Ubuntu or Debian, you can use uh, app get install. Um, so those packages maintained, the, I think release candidate is also available um, thanks to Sebastian Karenberg. Uh, there's Map Server for Windows, um, maintained by Jeff McKenna. So if you want a, a ready-made installation for, for Map Server on Windows that comes with its own Apache server and lots of applications and additional things bundled together, there's Map Server for Windows. And there's also GIS Internals has, has builds for Windows as well. And they also have development kits. So if you're building on Windows, you can download these development kits and compile it yourself. And these are the same development kits used for testing GDAL and Map Server in, on GitHub with the continuous integration. And it's been updated to support um, Visual Studio 2022 for any Windows developers. Um, a new way of getting a Map Server, although I think, Mike, you had a Docker image seven years ago, um, is, is to get it via Docker. So a camp to camp, I think there's a few camp to camp people around. Um, there's a very well maintained Docker image um, with over a million pulls. But if you run those commands there, you can start serving map files straight away from your machine. So you can pull the, the image with map server and you can serve directly from map files on your own machine via the Docker image. So it, it's very easy to, to get up and running for, for testing and probably production as well. Uh, another project that um, I was involved in a code sprint this year is GeoStyler. So people from the front end might know this a bit better. Um, it's basically the GDAL of, of styles. So you can translate between multiple styling formats. So for example, QGIS has its own styling methods. Map server has styling in, in map files, map box styling, um, and then obviously SLD. And GeoStyler basically can, can translate all these into an intermediary GeoStyler format and then spit it out into the new format. So for map server users, if you're looking to reuse your styles from, from map files, or if you're looking to reuse styles from elsewhere, so for example, if you've done styling in QGIS, you can use, um, if you're going from map file to GeoStyler, there's a TypeScript parser, so um, kind of the, the JavaScript ecosystem. And if you're looking to go from the GeoStyler format to map files, 
then there's a Python library um, created by GeoCat called GeoCat Bridge Style. So just to give you a, a quick example of the, um, of the GeoStyler, you can do npm install, so that's the node installer. And then there's a command line application where you can take in your, take in your map file and you can, you can spit out any of the, the new styles, uh, sorry, the, the other styles. So in this case, it's going to output it as the, the max map box style. And there's a whole comprehensive test suite that checks all these. And basically, yeah, for, for this input layer, which is a very simple, this is an example of a layer in, in map server, in a map file. It's just got a, a style with a, a color, so a green line with a width. And then if you run it through this, then it'll output this, this style, which you can then use on, on the client side. So you can use for, for styling vector tiles in, in open layers. So basically, you can reuse any of your styles on the back end and the front end by, by automatically generating these styles. So it's, it's a very handy project to be aware of for map server users. OK, so um, just on getting involved in, in the community. So we have kind of the, all of the traditional communication channels. I guess the mailing list is probably the still the best place to go to, to ask questions and get in touch with the, the developers. So there's a users list and a developers list. There's an IRC channel that's, that's still going, and um, that's used for meetings mainly. There's a Twitter account, and then, yeah, there's hashtags on GIS Stack Exchange. So that's also a good place to, to get answers to questions on, on Map Server. There's also a community gallery that's on the, the GitHub wiki, wiki. So here's a couple of new submissions within the last year. So these systems are built using a Map Server backend. So here's one from Lincoln County, Oregon. And then here's another one from the Lance Materiet, if the, I think, if it's pronounced that way, uh, which has been running on Map Server for over 10 years. So I think the maps have been recently updated, and it's. Um, yeah, some beautiful maps anyway, so feel free to browse, browse, browse those links. In terms of community groups, um, during the pandemic, um, there's, a, there's a map server user group um, in Minnesota, so the Twin Cities Minnesota OSGO chapter um, that's, that meet up in person. But during the pandemic, a lot of their talks started to go online, so there's a lot of useful talks. Steve Lime gave kind of a, an hour-long overview of the OGC API support. So there's uh, recorded talks there. I think the, the hosting's being moved, so they might not be accessible at the moment. But um, there's a few, yeah, lots of map server-related talks available there. In terms of the community oversight, there's a PSC. So I think there's six of us at OS uh, Phosphor G this year. Uh, there's 14 in total, so yeah, almost half of us are here. Uh, there's also links to service providers and, and sponsors. If you're looking to, to help out on the project, I guess detailed bug reports on, on GitHub or via the, the user's main list are good. Any case studies as well, especially public maps, can be added to the gallery and then they'll get a mention um, next year. Uh, documentation fixes and updates are always welcome. Um, and then obviously with the, the 8.0 release candidates, if as many people can test as possible, then it'll make for a, a smooth release. Okay, so in, in summary, um, Map Server 8 is imminent imminent. So yeah, we've gone through the betas, we've gone through a release candidate, so there should be one more release candidate, and then the final, the final version will, will hit. Uh, it's got, yeah, lots of new features and improvements, so not just the ones I mentioned today, but it's, it's worth checking um, last year's presentation for, for kind of some of the other major features. Lots of projects are still kind of referring to Map Server, using Map Server. Sometimes it's quite well hidden away, but it's, it's definitely used. Um, so yeah, and just please get involved and, and get in touch with any of the PSC people if you're interested in development or, or helping out. Okay, so that's everything for me. So we've got time for questions.